and welcome to Mini Moderns. My name's Simone and welcome to my little corner of the interweb. This is where I start my journey as a miniaturist and start in my business as a miniaturist. And I'm so happy to share this journey with you guys. I hope you guys are excited to be here. Everything that we do here is from scratch. It's new, it's fresh, it's from the beginning. And I hope you guys enjoy it. This channel is going to have a lot of firsts. Um, this is my first video on this channel and it'll be I'll be showcasing all of my first miniatures so we're going to get the good, the bad, the ugly with this guys but the idea is to showcase my journey, showcase for anybody else who is starting a journey as a miniaturist and wonders where to start, how to start and hopefully I've picked up some stuff along the way that will help you guys on your journey. My first video today is going to be my mock-up room. My mock-up room basically is a room that I'm going to use to showcase any of my miniatures, make my little scenes for Etsy and any other things that I may need my pictures for. This is the mock-up room that I was talking about. It's a mock-up living room and it's somewhere where I can just like showcase any of the current miniatures that I've made. It's my first ever official miniature room and I am pretty chuffed with it so far I'm not gonna lie and I've kind of learned a lot of techniques on the way that I'll be using for my main project which will be a modern mini mansion so we'll be getting to that soon but first starting this journey I needed somewhere to kind of put things and you know see how things would work so that's why I've made this room everything is completely adjustable removable changeable including the floors so I will be showing you that as well um the door it's you can change it so everything in this room apart from the window can be moved around but um that is kind of the main thing that I wanted to do in this mock-up room is just have somewhere that I can just chop and change whenever I needed to so as I said earlier I am new to miniatures and new to the business in general so you can you can see some of the bits here this living room today we're going to be focusing on doing the general outside of the room just making the box itself the window and adjustable curtains the main focus of my channel what I'm going to be doing is adjustable movable usable rooms from scratch I don't know how that's going to work as I said I'm new to this so we shall see how it goes but I hope that you enjoy this first video and you get something from this if you do please let me know in the comments below so we're going to be looking at windows and adjustable curtains today and then keep going in pre next videos to see what else we do I hope you enjoy guys right so to get started I'm going to be using five millimeter white foam board so the floor is like 11 inch by 11 inch and the main wall, it will be 11 inch by eight and a half inches. The walls that I'm gonna have the window on, it will be 11 and a quarter inch by eight and a half inches. The first thing that I wanna do is actually do this window right here and that is going to be three inches by four inches i'm not sure if you guys prefer to work in inches or millimeters i found that i prefer millimeters so i might change measurements in the future but for now just so you get the basic size of the room that's what i'm kind of doing um i've got myself a ruler yes as i said i'm a beginner so everything i have here is new is fresh and um, it's really useful and I found that with measuring it's like you have to measure a certain way because I was getting wonky lines guys um, here it was literally like a millimeter out if that and I was like no the line is not straight I must correct this so I found myself um, being really finicky about things but I guess it's good to start that way I think I, as I'm learning I don't want to make any like learn things the wrong way so to speak so if I can get measurements done right the first time I will definitely try and do that so here I'm going to work on the window and so today basically I'm going to just show you how I put my window together and how I made my removable curtains and adjustable curtains because um, like I said earlier the gist of this room is so that you, if you want to showcase any of your miniatures whether you've got an Etsy store or you just want to take some pictures for the gram you want to have a little like a mock-up room 
um, because I did recently open an Etsy store. I was thinking, how am I gonna showcase any of the stuff that I've done? So I figured, you know, why not do it this way? So now I've uh, managed to figure out how to cut out the window. <laughs> so we've got to get the window cut out. Um, and this again, it's gonna be something that I want this to be adjustable to. And I will show you that in a little bit. So now that this is cut out, it's time to get the framing done. And I actually use some coffee stirrers to do this. The best technique that I've come up with so far for getting a nice frame is just lining up the coffee stirrer and kind of penciling where you want the connecting part of the um, frame to go. So that's what I do right here is just use my pencil and I've, I've got myself some mitre shears. I've never used them before until now. So it's, it was a new experience. Trying to open them was actually initially a problem, but we figured it out. So I love that this can actually be angled to what you're doing. I need to try more thicker things so far. I've only used it on the coffee stirrers, but I would like to see how strong these things really are. And if you do have any of the like recommendations, if there are stronger or better ones or anything like that, please leave them in the comment for me. So uh, if I put this the right way around, you can see that. So I use this as my starting block to put a little frame around the window. As I said, this is something I wanted to keep. This wall in particular, I wouldn't be adding any wallpaper or anything to it. I just want to keep it clear. Um, so what I've done, once I've got all my measurements, I borrowed one of my daughter's little play cups for my water. I do need to get myself some more equipment, but we'll leave that for another day because as you guys know, things mount up. And it's actually a, a perfect time for me to um, talk to you about some of the stuff that I've actually put together to help with, you know, you buying products, remembering what you've bought, what you haven't. So I've got some things here that I think will be really useful. And I'll show you that in a second. But just quickly, do you like getting your hands dirty? Because I realize I'm like, ah, I'm getting paid on my fingers. I know it's part of the job. So I actually use a toothpick here to kind of pin it down. So I didn't get paint on my fingers. I know I'm sad. And I also went ahead and painted a few more for the inner frame of the window as well. So we'll get to that. But as I said, I have got these spending log books. So you can track any time that you buy something new for a project. You can write it down, write the price, where you got it from, the amount. And it's something really handy, you know, to help you along. So now that everything is painted and dried, it's time for me to position things. And um, another thing I have learned is you measure twice, stick once, I think, or something like that. So it's kind of, I kind of made sure that my measurements were absolutely accurate before I decided to glue anything down. And it's so funny to me. It's like sometimes you measure something and it's perfectly fine and you go put it down and it's not. And I'm like, ah, what did I do? So anyway, I'm using some Gorilla Glue, um, the wood Gorilla Glue. I found that to be really useful. And one of these little glue sticks that you get in your know, little painting set. I've actually got a whole bunch of these and I think they're really fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this one down. So I've got my first um, part of the frame. Another thing that I am learning is patience. You've got to take your time, right? So for future projects i'll stick things and let them dry <laughs> but this did actually turn out pretty cool i'm like ah yes i've got a frame on my window Woohoo! so i eventually let it dry uh, before i went in to do the inner part of the frame i just thought to clean it up a little bit it would just look nice if the whole frame was black as i'm going for a kind of like modern room even though it's a mock-up um there's certain elements that I want it to kind of stick to the theme that I'm doing. But if you are doing this for yourself, by all means, frame it however you want. Choose whatever works for the kind of style that you're doing. As I said, if you do have an Etsy store or you just want to take really cool pictures, it's nice to have a, a room that you can kind of showcase them in. I definitely would advise having like one white wall and then the others changeable which i'll show you a little bit later on so now i've just measured up and i'm just gonna fit that in there and i'm like yep yeah, that's great so i just use my little pencil just to mark exactly where it is i found that with measuring and cutting as well if i cut just outside the pencil line things seem to 
fit a little bit more snug opposed to me cutting on the line or just before the line so like just after the line slightly I find that thing's kind of just sitting almost without glue I will glue this down however but it was just it was good to know that oh I went just outside of the line and it fit really nice and snug and I could probably do that with all the pieces but Mm, maybe in future room <laughs> no but I've got to keep this and, and there you have it so now all the the window essentially is done but I do have some plastic or you can call it acetate um to make for the glass and as I said because this is an adjustable room I like the window to be adjustable too so I am going to cut the the plastic frame or plastic window and put it on but I want to leave it so if I want to take the um I'm going to be putting pictures in it you see so I'm going to stick it so that I can slide my own pictures in so if I just you know make like a U shape with the glue here and then I can slide my pictures in and take them out depending on what I'm kind of doing so I was really like yay I've got to get some pictures and put them in there but I'll save that for the next episode so make sure you stay tuned for that so now that we've got the the gist of the window I want to make sure that the room is all level and how we kind of want it and I will be gluing on the outside of the floor if that makes sense because I, I don't want them on top of the floor so if you can see I'm framing my walls around the floor and that's how I'll stick them so I'm just going to put the glue you see on the outside this is my floor piece and then I will just connect it so my wall piece will be connected on to the window and with my floor piece I'll have it kind of like that just using the hot glue like that perfect so now using a printable that I've actually made myself and it's available in my Etsy store as well. A link for all of my socials will be in the description if there's anything that you seem, you know, interested or anything. So I've printed these out and I've actually stuck them onto a cereal box so that I can put them in the room, the room and remove them anytime I need to. Um, I have just find that a lot easier obviously for if I want to change the floor or move things around to suit whatever decor I'm doing at the time and it was just a nice simple way and what I'll use to stick it down is essentially um, duct tape or masking tape and just stick it down or if I wanted to glue it I can stick it and then remove it depending on what kind of look I'm going for so right now I'm just going to clean up the edges and get my floor to actually fit the room and I've also um, scored the lines of this as well. I don't think I have actually shown that here, but I actually do score the lines. So at this point, I am actually using Mod Podge Gloss because I wanted my floor to kind of have a, a nice shine to it. And with the black, I think it kind of looks really kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna be making some more of these floor textures as well. I need to work out what works best because I've um, experienced trying to make my own black floors especially it's quite tricky to get them to print out as you want so if you do have any tips on how to make your black floors print out without just looking like a black page that would be great but I do find that the Mod Podge helps kind of bring it together and you get that nice glossy floor look and as I have put the scores into it as well you should be able to see it more once it's all glossed and dried and uh, it all starts to come together so I'm kind of really happy with this and Mod Podge guys I know some of you guys have been doing this forever so you know about Mod Podge but me I'm like this stuff is amazing <laughs> so now I'm just gonna let it to let it dry let it gloss over and it actually dries surprisingly fast so I was really really chuffed about that as well so now I'm actually going to make the curtain rod and I actually use just a small skewer and some little beads with holes in them that I got from one of my daughter's hair bands actually so I actually just put a little bit of glue into the hole and then just push that onto the end of the rod and I pushed it to make a little bit come out of the side because I might decorate it in some way but we'll see but I do the same on both sides and I'm not sure kind of maybe want to like a crystal look at the side but we'll see if you, if you know what I mean it's like kind of popping out at the end here 
um, I could file it and shave it off or I could keep it and paint it. I'm not entirely sure how I wanna keep this just yet, but for now it's just making the basic rod to put on top of the window. Now it's time for me to make the actual curtain template. Basically, I wanted this template so that anytime if I do want to change the curtains, I've got the template here. If I want to print a design, create a design, I've done, I've read, I found myself doing this with a lot of the things I've made is just making templates and then sticking them onto cardboard so I can go back. I've got myself a little template box. So I'm feeling kind of proud about that. Um, so now I'm just cutting around the template so that I can get the right measurements for my curtains. But you'll find that um, I do have kids. Yes, I have three, one 13, one six and one one. Uh, but my six year old, if you see her little hand here, she's playing with my miniature duct tape that I made and I kind of lost track of what I was doing at one point and there she goes, <laughs> she was plonking things down. And whilst I was watching her, I cut off a piece of my curtain. I'm like, what, wait, what is this doing here? Kids, you gotta love them, right? So um, I'm writing down my template and putting it somewhere safe. I really advise doing this if you don't already, have a box of templates, it saves you time. And also jigs is something that I am new to, but I've realized fantastic. So yeah, so I realized my measurements weren't quite right. So I'm like, where's the piece that I've just chopped off? Cause this is gonna be the end of my um, original design that I'm coming up with. Um, so I need that back. So again, I'm gonna use great old masking tape or what do you call it? Duct tape, masking, no, it's masking tape. And I'm just gonna stick that back. So it was like no harm, no foul pretty cool right so we're going to stick that back on and then I'm also going to go ahead and stick that onto some cardboard and get the measurements done as well so I don't actually lose that in the future um, so here we go I just use the tape to stick it down and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut around this so as I said I can use it for future references and it's just always there for that particular window anyway I have a size of how I want a particular curtain there we go just stick that down onto my fabric now uh, use any fabric that you have i am using uh, white cotton and it's really kind of thick as well so it's good i got this um little cutter a while back when i was doing some crocheting work and um i um i don't think really got to use it so now this is perfect i use it for everything now it's really really handy it's really super sharp, cuts through anything and I love it. It's like my little pizza cutter. So I am just cutting the fabric now and getting the design going. Right now with the fabric cut and I'm happy with it and it's perfect. And obviously need to make sure that it fits on the rod. So I'll be making two of these, but I just want to see how it fits over the rod. And that is looking pretty good. Cause you want it kind of shuffle along so you've got half the size of that if you um that's if you want to have it like ruffled and wrinkled a little bit i want to make two of these that'll be half the size of the actual rod and i think that is coming along quite well so right this is the special source guys this is how i'm going to be making my curtains adjustable so if you wanted it to be like um blinds for example you get these um, magnetic strips, you get a side A and a side B and you connect them together. So just like this, if you just put them together, they just stick perfectly. So I'm gonna give you an example now. So say if you wanted to make um, blinds or just one sheet of curtain without any wrinkles or ruffles, this is how you would do it. Um, but a little bit later on, I do actually slice this up a little bit um, and you'll see how that is for this style of curtain I'm going for, but this was just something that I, I figured out. I just thought, mm, how am I gonna get these curtains to connect and be removable if I want to change them? So what I'm gonna do, you get one side that already is kind of split in two, which is really useful. So I just use my little pizza cutter. It's not a pizza cutter, by the way, but that's what I cut it, I call it. If you know the name of that, I should really figure it out, but I can. There's too much to take in at once, okay guys? <laughs> So now again, I'm going to just slice the other side. So I've got like just spares. It's really handy. You can cook it, cut it as big or as small as you want. And it actually peels off as well. So it's super handy. So now I've got my two pieces for my two curtains. 
but for what I'm actually doing I will be um, cutting those down into tiny little squares so they fit how I want right so in order to actually make this this is like the the cool part here's the science guys we're going to um, peel them apart also make sure that they connect properly because you know obviously it sometimes it looks right and the connection kind of looks right but it kind of bounces a little bit so you kind of want to make sure that it looks right so what you'd want is the top of your curtain to have a piece of the magnetic strip um, I got these from Amazon as well I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in these as well if I remember I will put a link to anything that I remember or just comment below if there's anything that you're interested in and if I've got them to hand which I should because I've got my spending log I'll be able to let you know so you put the you put the magnetic uh, piece at the top then put your rod in and then fold the material over to see where you'd want it to connect and as I said this is if you're doing a simple one without any ruffles and you just want it straight so it would be pretty cool for some blinds or just a straight hanging curtain uh, you could do it any size as I say so then you you get your magnetic strip you see where you want it and you're like yep that is perfectly fine and because these are already um, peelable and sticky you could just peel it off and stick it for extra security I would suggest putting some more glue on there if you definitely don't want that strip to come off at all but for now I'm just actually showing just a different method but this is not what I'm going to be doing for my final one I'll show you that in a moment but there you go you see you you have your curtain and if you just want to take it off you just unclip it and take it off and then you've got your very own adjustable curtain um, as I said if you don't want to glue it down you can still peel the magnetic strips off and put it onto a different piece of material if you choose um, I just think it's really cool and handy and I'm always kind of you know figure out different ways to do things that are quite creative and unique and um, I think that this is something that will really work I mean one of the main things with my miniature journey is making products that are adjustable removable easy access and functional because I do want to make it so my my kids can actually play with these things and eventually make kits that other people can play with if they've got kids or if they want to play with themselves and make small adjustments so that's the main uh, focus of what I'm trying to do with my miniatures as well is make them functional and enjoyable so now that we've I've showed you how to use the magnets all I'm going to do is clean the edges on the material and I've got some super cool glue it's fabric no so glue and you just like stick it on it it holds so well you don't need to iron it you just fold it if you've got a nice steady hand you can fold it exactly how you want it's the multi fabric glue that I've got right here and it's it's really good guys I definitely recommend it um, trim off some of the edges but I don't really need to because I'm going to use another fabric to make my curtain pattern and let me just test and make sure that this actually fits where I want so I fold it to where my rod would be and I see that it hangs to the floor as well and it just fits in there perfectly but I'll add a little bit more because I want it to actually touch the floor I like long draping curtains I think they look really nice so I've got two of these got to get them nice cleaned up on the edges and then I'm going to add some more fabric and I'll show you so with the edges nice and clean I have got I'm gonna iron them out in a little while but I've got some nice it's more of a linen a black linen um it's kind of quite sturdy it's a little bit thick but it's really really nice it's I like the uh, strength from this one and I'm going to kind of wing it with my design I had my original on my template that I know I want the bottom to kind of have a little strip on there so I was like mm, I'd want the rest of it and, and this is how you can get creative with whatever you're making put on some shapes some patterns and see how it sits really um, I do know that I'm going to be using this as I said using this multi fabric so glue perfect and this is how we're going to have it so I'm going to have a strip at the top a strip at the bottom so the main thing I'm going to do is clean up the edges on these black strips so they can sit nicely along just taking just seeing the size that I want it if I fold over 
so that's roughly going to be the size that I need so if I fold over the top and the bottom and get them lined up really nice and clean again you can use a sewing machine if you want um, I do have a sewing machine and I will be using it for some of my projects but for this I felt that the the glue is just works perfectly fine so I just put it along the top fold it and um, you kind of have to let it set for a minute or two just to let it get a little bit tacky but it dries super quick once it's on there it's pretty much on um, watch your fingers though because it you don't want to mess up any fabrics that you're using if you get glue in your fingers so I'll say just take a little bit of time with that these are all things that I'm learning because I was in there getting my hands all up in there glue everywhere I'm like I need to take my time I'm excited <laughs> I need to calm down a little bit so let's get this nice and clean so it looks really really fresh as I said this is my first project so there's still a lot to learn but I'm excited to you know be on this journey and be able to look back and see where I've actually started and if you guys are new as well this would be a good point for you to kind of take a log of what you're doing and you know keep keep tabs of your journey and so now that I've got the material I'm going to just go ahead and get that all cleaned up and then put that on my curtain so there we have it that's the first piece done and I'm going to go ahead and do a nice little trim at the bottom as well so it's the same procedure of what I've just done except um, just at the bottom and I won't leave any white it's just going to be like a nice black finish so with this I followed the pattern of the actual material you can see the little ridges in there I wanted those at the bottom of my curtain so I made sure to keep those little ridges in the, uh, the material already so any bits that I don't need I'm going to trim off but I can get rid of anything else once it's stuck onto my curtain I'm going to show you that in a minute I'm going to have it attached there but if you turn it over there's a little bit hanging at the edge that is not necessary I don't need it so I will be just gluing what I need and getting rid of any excess and I don't really have to cut anything as well because it kind of you just fold it and you just get the neat lines and all that fraying you won't see any of that that will all be nicely secured on there as well just get a nice clean finish so you see the little ruffled edges at the bottom I'm just gonna go ahead with my scissors and cut them off and make sure to just keep the the end pattern I don't know if you can see it of the curtain here it looks really nice it just gives it that nice little edge and there we have it there is the design of our curtain very simple and you can use it with any materials that you have so I'm going to go ahead and make another one of these and I will get back to you when that's done right so that is done both of them have been pressed and now they are ready to get the ruffles or wrinkles or drapery however you want to call it um, there is a few methods that you can do this I've chosen to iron and steam my folds so I've got these little pins here and this is what I'm going to use on this foam board I've had these foam mats for a while now they're just so handy especially you know if you do knitting and crocheting and you need to kind of block things out and stretch things this is like the perfect kind of mat to use to put any of your pins in so I definitely advise getting some of these if you haven't already so now I'm just going to work out where exactly I want my creases to be and put a bunch of pins in there iron it down steam it and then I will let it set once I've actually got the desired amount of seam lines then I will let it go <laughs> So you see I just go over it with the iron and then I give it some steam as well but I'll do the steaming once I've got all of my seam lines in there just so I can let it all dry at one time but the iron just helps it get a little bit more straight I find personally but everyone has their own methods to doing this I say with this as well just take your time Get them exactly how you want them i think with curtains it doesn't have to be too perfect but because i'm going for a modern look i definitely want things to be a bit more streamlined and a lot of you know straight clear lines so here they are they've been set for a while 
they're dry now so I'm able to actually take the the pins out and so we can actually have a look for the first time together at how these curtains have turned out these are my first ever curtains as I've said a lot of stuff on this channel is going to be my first time ever uh, that's what I should call this channel my first time ever <laughs> but um it's all going to be a lot of my first experimenting exploring and just seeing what works and sharing it with you guys sometimes we're going to get a hit sometimes we're going to get a miss but i'll be completely transparent and let you guys see the the process of what i'm actually doing so now that it's actually set i can take the pins out i do like this the uh design of these curtains as well it's really simple so if you're doing a modern room, you can, as I say, you can get away with lines and circles and shapes and abstracts and you can kind of go wild with it. And I think these curtains might be used more than once. I will, I'll make a few, that's for sure. Um, but we'll see. We'll, it depends on what kind of uh, rooms we're doing because I'm currently, this is going to be the mock-up living room. And um, as, as I said earlier, for a start of a, a huge journey we've got guys of making a, a modern dollhouse from scratch using foam board. So these are all good little techniques kind of to help me start on a bigger journey. So I needed somewhere to start guys and this is it. So there we go, the plastic head pins. They are back safe and secure. And let's just see. Obviously we can do any little clear ups afterwards, but my main thing is have we, have we got some movement on these curtains? <laughs> we do, we have some movement. I'm actually really happy with how this has turned out. It looks really good. I'm really impressed with that actually, I'm not gonna lie. And let's just make sure that this fits. So now, like I mentioned earlier, my magnetic clips, I've um, stuck them down, but just in tiny squares so that I can actually put the seam lines in between and you can still move them along the rod because obviously the thick bar that I showed you earlier you can't adjust that you know you can't move it back and forth but with this you can and so as I get the said if you try this at home yourself just experiment with it when you put in your little seam lines and ruffles in your curtains add your magnets see what sits well for you and always do a magnet check before you stick things down as well because once or twice I stuck things the wrong way and they they weren't connecting guys they weren't connecting so definitely do your checks and make sure everything can snap shut and it's perfect and there you have it we have some adjustable removable curtains yay <laughs> and they fit really nice and I think we did what we needed to do. That was just step one in creating our mock-up miniature room. And I just wanna make sure that it actually fits okay in the room itself. So let me just uh, get the, there we go. I will have to obviously stick the rod down, but for now it's just experimenting, testing. Fortunately, you can't quite see right at the bottom, but it is hitting the floor. And I will show you again um, how that looks in future videos as well. So for now, we've managed to make the window. We've got our glass for the window, which will be adjustable too. And we do have our curtains. So that is it for our first episode, guys. We have adjustable, removable curtains at the start of this mock-up room. So stay tuned for my next video where we get to see lots more and bring it all together. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe.